Thank you, thank you. Uh, gonna get the obvious out of the way. Question I can feel is on all of your guys' minds. What is that guy's voice? Sound like the love child of Bane and Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and the answer is the other day I was at a karaoke bar. And I didn't want to sing. And then someone put on Complicated by Avril Lavigne. <laughs> and then I had an invasive brain surgery that damaged my vocal nerves. <laughs> I think that's what did it. Um, I did, I had the surgery, other symptoms of the surgery uh, include short-term memory loss, a big juicy dog drug ass, <laughs> short-term memory loss, and uh, double vision. So, pretty crowded room tonight, guys. <laughs> Surprising number of twins in the King's Cross area. <laughs> um, I told that joke, I told that joke about my own, my own medical condition the other day, and someone said that I was attention seeking. I said, honey, who do you think these spotlights are for? <laughs> trying to solve a comedian by calling them attention seeking is a little bit like trying to solve a landlord by calling them greedy. <laughs> like, I know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, I love my landlord. Who here loves their landlord? Who <laughs> thinks so? What the fuck? <laughs> I've never had that reaction before. Who <laughs> rude? You're a landlord. Um, <laughs> fuck it out. Um, me and my landlord, we have a great relationship. We have a great relationship. Uh, he's always texting me. He's like, oh, I'm going to raise your rent. <laughs> so I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> um, but we have a good relationship, so he compromises. Uh, and he's going to raise my rent. <laughs> but to compromise, he is also not going to fix the mold in my ceiling. <laughs> nice. Um, talking of my surgery, uh, as we were, um, I was going into the surgery, and I was told there were two options. Uh, two options. One of them, a little bit riskier, but a better chance of like saving my voice. And so to decide if they wanted to do this more risky operation, they were like, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a civil servant. They said, that's okay. You don't use your voice much then. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, actually, doing a little bit of stand-up comedy. <laughs> and then I realized I'd entered a very high-pressure situation. So I had five minutes to prove that I was funny enough to save my voice. <laughs> And that was the tightest five I've ever done in my life. <laughs> We're talking callbacks. We're talking audience interaction. We're talking he's talking about his family and I said I'd shag his wife. <laughs> it was going really well, it was going really well. Until he said, this is the other surgeon's going to be operating on you. This is Dr. Naylor. And I said, Naylor? I barely know her. <laughs> And that's why I sound like this. Um, I'm, uh, I'm single at the moment. Really expecting some gasps of surprise there, guys. But that's okay. I'm um, single, which means uh, I basically spent my entire life trying not to give women the ick. They must not heard of the ick. It's this fun new thing that men have. But when you're talking to a woman, at any moment, you can say or do anything that makes them never want to sleep with you again. <laughs> and it's great. I was on a date with a woman the other day. First of all, pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. And it was going well. It was going well. You know, I asked her about her family. She asked me about mine. I gave her a shot for sure run through the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> it was going well. She was coming back to mine until I gave her the ick going down the stairs of a double-decker bus. <laughs> While we're on the topic, whose idea was it to put fucking stairs on a moving vehicle? <laughs> it's crazy, we've been convinced by a big bus that isn't some way a normal way to act. But you might think, you might think, well, if there's stairs in a vehicle, at least I'll wait for you to be, like, seated and belted. 
before they move. <laughs> and you'd be very wrong. Those mirrors on the stairs, and also you can look down, so the bus driver can look up and see where you are like your most vulnerable. <laughs> I'm talking one thing in the air, one hand on your phone, one hand on your kebab. So the perfect time to slam on the brakes, send you flying down the stairs, embarrass you in front of your day. And guys, I have double vision. It's twice as hard for me. I'm seeing two sets of stairs, four feet, and eight kebabs. You do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah.